It is happening. Ford is struggling to sell their cars, and now they're pushing big discounts for everyone. But before you dive headfirst and buy yourself a shiny new car, you need to fully understand what the intention is behind all of this. And let me tell you, it is not pretty. It might seem like a sweet deal, but it has a bitter end. Let me break it down for you. What exactly happened? Dealerships are looking like mini cityscapes made entirely of Ford vehicles. Rows upon rows of F-150s, even those Lightning pickups just sitting. That's not exactly your everyday sight. And even out at Ford's mega test track in Dearborn, hundreds, maybe even thousands of those F-150 and F-150 Lightning beasts lined up for miles. And these price drops from Ford? They're not just reactions to slower sales, they're like tactical maneuvers. At first, Ford was all about hiking prices, thinking it would make their cars more exclusive. But now, with people not biting, they've hit the brakes fast to drum up some serious buyer interest. They could have recovered from this if they were not so obsessed with EVs. These automakers thought they could just wave their magic EV ones and poof, instant profits. But it turns out the road to EV dominance is a lot bumpier than they expected. They're looking at a whopping $5 billion in losses. That's a far cry from the meager $3 billion they budgeted for. And you know what that means? The Blue Oval Company is scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to capital. Sure, their trusty combustion-powered rides can help cover the losses, but who knows how long the gravy train is going to last? The legacy car brands really put the pedal to the metal, throwing everything they had into the electric game, thinking they could easily crack the EV code. Just like last year, reports suggested Ford was losing a staggering $36,000 on each and every F-150 Lightning they sold. I know it's enough to make your jaw drop, but it gets even worse. The total loss for Ford's EV division, affectionately known as the Model E, was a jaw-dropping $5 billion. So what's a struggling automaker to do? Well, they have to make tough decisions. In these uncertain EV times, Ford has no choice but to pump the brakes on that $12 billion investment plan. They've got to protect the bottom line after all, so they've had to say goodbye to the Grand Battery Plant expansion in Kentucky and sayonara to the full throttle production of the beloved F-150 Lightning. But the nightmare just keeps getting worse because of one main thing. Wars and losses. After Tesla unleashed their price war, forcing Ford to slash their prices even further, the situation has gone from bad to downright catastrophic. It's reported that Ford is now losing a mind-blowing $100,000 on every single EV they sell. Can you imagine that? Let that sink in for a moment. If we do the maths, the Blue Oval brand managed to sell a meager 20,000 EVs in the first quarter of this year. That means they lost more than $2 billion in just the first three months of 2024. So, what's a struggling automaker to do in these wild EV times? Well, Ford had no choice but to slam on the brakes when it came to that $12 billion investment plan. They had to say goodbye to the Grand Battery Plant expansion in Kentucky and sayonara to the full throttle production of the beloved F-150 Lightning. But hey, at least they're staying nimble, right? Adapting to the ever-changing tides of the automotive world. It ain't easy, that's for sure. I mean, just imagine the roller coaster ride these automakers are on. One minute they're dreaming of electric glory, and the next they're scraping for every penny. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom, folks. There's a silver lining to this electric cloud. You see, EV sales are still relatively modest, which means Ford's traditional combustion engine vehicles are still doing the heavy lifting. In fact, each of these gas guzzlers is outselling the entire Model E lineup. That's where Ford is making the big bucks, my friends. For instance, they racked up an impressive $3 billion in profit from their Super Duty trucks alone. And let's not forget the hybrid sector, which is on fire, generating over $900 million in the first quarter of this year. So while the EV side of the business might be sinking faster than a lead balloon, Ford's other divisions are keeping the company afloat, at least for now. Because even in that segment, they're still facing tough competition. Toyota has been a pioneer in hybrid tech since the 1990s with the iconic Prius, and their hybrid lineup has made a huge green impact globally. They've got hybrids for days, from the Camry to the Highlander, all built with Toyota's legendary reliability. And that is a real kicker, because that is what Ford is struggling with currently. Reliability You see, the Blue Oval has never really been the poster child for reliability, but when they jumped into the EV game, things went south real quick. Just look at the Mach-E. This electric crossover was the first one out of the gate, and let me tell you, it came with some serious issues. 
Battery overheating was one of the main culprits, and Ford had to issue not one, not two, but a massive recall covering nearly 35,000 models from 2021 and 2022. Apparently, the battery contactor had a bit of an overheating problem, which could cause the vehicle to lose power, especially when you really put the pedal to the metal. And that's not all. The F-150 Lightning, Ford's much-hyped electric truck, didn't exactly come out of the gate problem-free either. They had a couple of recalls of their own, including one in 2023, where the fasteners in the high-voltage battery pack weren't properly secured. And get this, one of those Lightning trucks actually went up in flames in the Dearborn plant parking lot. Sure, we get it, it's new tech that's still finding its footing. But EV technology isn't quite ready to roll with the big boys, especially where Ford is expecting to dominate the pickup truck market. The F-150 Lightning, for all its promise, stumbled when it came to towing power and range. That impressive 280-mile range? Well, it takes a nosedive in the real world, especially when you're towing. We're talking 90 to 115 miles on a full charge, depending on the load. That's like showing up to a drag race with a tricycle. Before we talk about the details and combustion cars too, let's get one thing straight. EVs still have some serious homework to do before they can dance toe-to-toe -to -toe with their fossil-fueled counterparts in the pickup arena. Sure, they've got the potential, but until they beef up that towing muscle and stretch out their range, you're still playing catch-up in the big leagues. You know, EVs are supposed to be the future, the shining beacons of reliability and innovation, but Ford's real-world performance has been anything but. Heck, these reliability woes are one of the main reasons why potential EV buyers are still hesitating and sticking to proven technologies. And you better believe Ford's loyal customers aren't exactly thrilled either. But on the other hand, the competition is doing better. Tesla cars are one of the most reliable EVs on the market, and in the combustion engine department, Toyota is killing it. But that's not all. The rabbit hole goes deeper than just this, so watch carefully. Dealership Issues and Brand Perception Have you checked out what's been going on with these SUVs? Ford's got themselves into a bit of a pickle, especially with this whole gas leak issue that's got safety alarms ringing loud and clear. Recently, they had to recall 43,000 units, which begs the question, what's the deal with Ford lately? The problem centers around faulty fuel injectors in the Bronco. These little troublemakers have a knack for spring and leaks. Picture this, gas dripping where it shouldn't, meeting the engine hotspots, talk about a recipe for disaster. Even if you're not a car guru, you can see why this is no joke. Now, Ford's fix? Instead of swapping out these bad injectors for good ones, they're opting for a band-aid solution, slapping on a tube to reroute leaked fuel away from the engine's hot zones and onto the ground. Creative? Sure. Effective? Not so much. Sure, this quick fix might prevent immediate fires, but it opens up a whole new can of worms, thinks sudden slowdowns, or worse, stalling on the freeway. That's not exactly what you'd call a smooth ride, is it? It's like they're masking the issue rather than fully fixing it by just diverting the fuel and shutting down parts of the fuel pump. And let's be real, Ford had their fair share of hiccups in the quality control department before, and this latest hiccup with the Bronco isn't exactly helping them regain our trust, is it? They've been on a bumpy road with manufacturing woes, and this recall isn't exactly a confidence booster. And that's a huge red flag for dealerships. Plus, remember the days when everyone was rushing to get their hands on the latest EVs, willing to pay top dollar just to get ahead of the curve? Well, guess again. These days are over. Ford can't pull that one old trick again. Now EVs are sitting pretty on dealer lots, gathering dust like forgotten treasures in an attic. Selling an electric vehicle these days is no walk in the park. Dealers are finding out the hard way that it takes a lot more effort to close a deal. Unlike your typical gas guzzlers, EV buyers aren't exactly impulse shoppers. They take their sweet time, weighing every option like it's a life-changing decision. That means salespeople are putting in double the hours for the same old commission. And let's talk maintenance. Another headache for dealers, with EVs, there's no more cashing in on oil changes or those routine tune-ups that keep combustion engines purring. It's like the money train's slowing down and no one's thrilled about it. So is it any wonder that only half of the dealers out there are even bothering to sell electric vehicles? It's not just about the sales struggle. Dealers are facing slim margins these days. Remember those sky-high markups when the Mackey first hit the scene? Yeah, those days are long gone. Now it's slim pickings for profit margins, making it harder to justify pushing EVs off the lot. But that's not all. 
Ford had this wild idea to get all their dealers on board with selling EVs by putting them through a fancy certification program. Sounds good, right? Well, not so fast. It turns out that being part of the EV club comes with a hefty price tag, like at least $500,000 hefty. That's just for the basic package, including charges and training. But wait, there's more. For those who wanted to go all out with the Elite program, which threw in extra charges, demo units, and even a spot on Ford.com, the bill shot up to a whopping $1.2 million. Many dealers scratched their heads from the get-go, wondering why they'd shell out so much dough when the returns weren't guaranteed. The others? Well, they were initially keen, but as things got messier, they started bailing out one by one. Who can blame them? Why sink a fortune into something so uncertain, especially when Ford's whole electric vehicle plan is still up in the air? And here's where it gets even juicier. As it turns out, this whole certification gig wasn't exactly according to the book. State authorities across the US weren't thrilled, seeing it as a big roadblock to fair competition. If you thought that this was fishy, then let me tell you about the recent discounts. If you just look at the numbers, you'll get lost in the maze. The numbers don't lie, but you need to know the context too. You see, in 2023, Ford hit a major milestone with a jaw-dropping 7.1% surge in overall sales. That's right, talk about a massive boost. They didn't just inch past the million-unit mark in truck sales, they soared with a whopping 13% increase from their previous numbers. Market share isn't just about moving metal, it's about how much you stack up against the competition. While Ford cranked out more trucks than ever, shifts in the competitive landscape might have nudged their piece of the pie down a notch. But here's the twist. Despite this sales bonanza, Ford's market share shrank to 13% by year-end. Market share isn't just about moving metal, it's about how you stack up against the competition. While Ford cranked out more trucks than ever, shifts in the competitive landscape might have nudged their piece of the pie down a notch. But to really get what's going on here, we've got to peel back the layers, so let's do that. The Effects and Discounts now, you're probably wondering how they managed to pull off such a sales spree, right? Well, hold on to your hat because here's the scoop. That 7.1% sales rocket was fueled by a classic Ford move, the legendary stair-step incentive program. This thing is all about rewarding dealers big time for each shiny 2023 F-150 they move off the lot. And if they blast past those sales targets, boom, the rewards get even sweeter, like hitting the jackpot in a game of truck sales roulette. No wonder dealerships are hustling hard to move these trucks. With those fat incentives dangling like golden carrots, you better believe they're revving up the sales engines to full throttle. But hey, when the pressure's on to hit those targets, it doesn't take a genius to know that sometimes things can get a bit slippery. Now here's the kicker. According to the folks on the front lines, the dealers themselves, these incentive-driven tactics can sometimes put closing the deal ahead of making sure customers drive off happy. It's like they're playing the numbers game, chasing those big commission checks instead of focusing on making customers satisfied. So who's laughing all the way to the bank in all this? Well, you guessed it, the dealerships. Now, not every dealer fits their mold, but there are definitely those out there that are more concerned with padding their wallets than giving customers the red carpet treatment they deserve. And here's the thing, Ford is also taking a huge hit, so the unreliable production lines are now even more unreliable, because they're trying to cut down on cost. What does this mean for you? Why are some critics buzzing about these practices? Well, let's break it down. You've probably heard the rumblings, ethical concerns, finger pointing, the whole nine yards. But wait, hold up a sec, it's not all black and white. This situation is more intricate than meets the eye. And guess what? You don't need a PhD to see where this is heading. Every move we make today sets off a chain reaction that eventually circles back to us. But hey, it's not just us feeling the heat, Ford's in the hot seat too. The choices they make now could make or break their reputation and how they roll with the customers in the long haul. But that's not all. While dealerships are going full throttle with their EV offerings, Ford's feeling the pinch big time. Their strategy circling back to bite them, yet despite these financial fumbles, Ford's sticking to its guns on electrification. Yes, they might hold production and shut down some plants, but they're pumping in investments too. They're beefing up their electric vehicle lineup. But here's the multi-million dollar question. Why push forward if it's bleeding cash? Well, buckle up because it's a bit of a maze and it boils down to the software they're loading into their shiny new rides. It's not just about lines of code. It's a full-on chess move that puts dealerships squarely in the driver's seat. Translation, your car's fixes are practically handcuffed to dealership services, turning every basic maintenance into a pilgrimage to their service centers. 
Independent mechanics? They're out in the cold, locked out of vital software unless they pony up serious cash. And guess who's flipping the bill for these extra costs? You! With this technology deeply woven into their car's systems, automakers aren't just nudging, they're pushing you right into their exclusive service networks. The fallout? Fewer repair choices, lighter wallets, and a thinner playing field. Those indie mechanics, famous for their wallet-friendly prices and personal touch, they're hitting a roadblock, struggling to get their hands on the tools and diagnostic software needed for thorough fixes. Without access to the nitty-gritty data and updates from the manufacturers, their ability to offer diverse services is up in the air, leaving them with a tough call – adapt or lose out. And here's the kicker. These days, automakers hold the keys to their vehicle's code kingdom, meaning any tweaks or updates come straight from the source. When you're talking big bucks lost, you better believe these giants have a game plan to claw it back one way or another. Sure, Ford's in the red, but this financial squeeze pushes automakers to tighten their grip on repairs as a strategic countermove. It's a tricky dance, but hey, welcome to the high-stakes world of car tech. If you ask me, this seems a bit too fishy, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video.